G'day, I'm Paul. Welcome to Australia's most comprehensive four-wheel drive SUV test. We've done drag races, we've done some towing, but today is all about seeing how they perform off-road. We've got the whole crew getting everything set up before we actually get started. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this video, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you are on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That'll tell you every single time one of these mega tests go live. Let's get started. Okay, so I want to run you through the tests, and if you did watch our ute comparison video, some of you complained about the tyres that we used on these vehicles. Just to be 100% clear, we are using the tyres that come on these vehicles out of the factory. The whole point of this test in these light off-road conditions is to get an understanding of the vehicle that you're buying and whether it can actually do some of the light off-roading that we're doing. If you are going to do proper off-roading, you're probably going to go down the path of fitting all-terrains or a more aggressive tyre. We did ask the manufacturers that supply these vehicles to make sure that they were fitted with an all-terrain tire if it's available so you can see here on the defender this has the off-road pack with the all-terrain tires as well so we'll be a little bit of variance with those around the test but we'll see how we go this is our first test this is what's called the park break hill at this proving ground it's a set of rollers here and what it's designed to do is it's designed to see how well the traction control system works when we drive onto it and the whole point of that is it gives you an idea of what this vehicle is going to be like in the snow or when you have minimal traction and how well the car is able to deal with it. We're going to run all the vehicles in just the standard on-road mode here. If the vehicle has two-wheel drive, uh, such as some of the ute-based SUVs, we'll run it in two-wheel drive first and then attempt it in four-wheel drive as well. This is very tricky, so only the ones with good traction control systems will actually make it up here without rolling all the way back. Once we're done with the park brake hill, it's over to our offset mogul. Look, this one's pretty straightforward. What this is going to test is our chassis flex. I'm going to try and open and close the door of each of these cars as we get that full flex situation. Then in addition to that, we're going to do this a little differently to last time when we did this in the ute, because what we're going to do now is forwards and backwards. So we're going to get different lift uh, as we go through this different way. So it'll really just test out, again, how well the traction control system works when this is in forward will drive. If the vehicle does have a mud rut setting available, we will try it here in high range only. And also if it is one of those vehicles that has two wheel drive low range, we're going to have it in four wheel drive high range to try and tackle this. So it'll be a really good test to see exactly how these things hook up and get us out of this little offset mogul. Now this is where things start getting a little trickier. Vehicles are all going to arrive to this spot and this is where we have our mogul hill climb. So this is a bit of a, a dodgy surface because it's been wet at the moment. The clay will fill up the ruts in the tyres nicely. And as they progress to the top of the hill, there's going to be a set of moguls that they have to overcome. This is really going to challenge the four wheel drive systems because they have to be able to shuffle torque around the front and rear axles as they go to make it all the way to the top without stopping. We're going to put the vehicles into low range and their most aggressive setting here so that we can actually see how they traverse this terrain but if they do pass this hill it's not over just yet I have a slightly trickier setup just over here this is what I'm talking about we go from a 30% grade with moguls to a 45% grade with shale and just a, a really loose surface beneath. This is really going to be the ultimate test for these and I wouldn't want to be going any further off-road than this in a standard vehicle before you have to start modifying ground clearances and also changing tyres. As they get closer to the top it gets looser as well so any four-wheel drive SUV that's able to conquer the 30% and the 45% is a proper bona fide four wheel drive SUV. Once we get to the top as well, we're gonna turn around and test hill descent control to see what the rate of descent is and how much control the vehicle has over this super loose and steep descent. So I think we need to get started. Whoa. Okay, let's kick off with the Land Rover Defender. I get the feeling this is probably going to ace most of these tests uh, because this has the optional off-road packs. We've got a center diff lock, rear diff lock, height adjustable suspension. This one's also running all-terrain tires as well. Uh, before we kick off with the Defender though, I just want to call out uh, the cars that are missing here. So LTV D90 isn't here. They didn't want to be part of the test, unfortunately. So not here. Uh, we're also missing some other Land Rovers. So Land Rover Discovery and the Big Daddy Range Rover. Basically this test was constructed so that they had to have low range and also seven seats. So we did want to have those, but Discovery uh, is at an event. Range Rover was at an event. So this is our only Land Rover product, unfortunately. So, all right, what we're going to do uh, for this particular test, I'm going to leave this just in its standard road mode. So this is all in automatic. We'll roll onto the rollers here and we'll see how it goes in terms of traction control. So 
There are the rollers there, we'll come to a stop. I do like here in the center how it actually tells you whether the diffs are open or closed. So you can see now that is open on both. So I'll now roll onto the throttle and see what happens. That is so cool. They literally just locked immediately and it just pulled itself up. So look, I, I think that is such an impressive system that they've unlocked again there. So it really does show you that they have tuned this to perfection. And if you've got differentials like that, they can just unlock and lock at the drop of a hat. I think it just shows you that they really have thought about every application of this doing its day-to-day -day thing. Okay, it is mogul time. So I'm gonna put the Defender into mud ruts mode. So you press this button here, it brings up all your terrain response modes. I'm gonna press mud ruts. So that's going to adjust the traction control and just give it a little bit more slip as required. I'm also not going to raise the suspension height. So we're just gonna go through in normal height here. We might do a run again later on in higher suspension. We're gonna go forwards and then backwards as well. So just keep an eye on this screen here, you can see what those uh, center and rear diffs are doing. We'll also do our door flex test as well here. Dropping that in. I can hear the rubber around the doors there making a bit of noise. I'll come in here and get it into that full flex situation, which is about there somewhere. About there somewhere. Make sure we can open and close that door. Yeah, no dramas. I love this, it shows you the level of articulation you have here. Because we have air suspension, this actually is afforded a huge amount of articulation. I'm gonna roll onto the throttle now and we'll just see what it does. It's kicking a little bit sideways there, but just walking through that. Without any dramas at all, that is, that is seriously impressive. All right, let's turn around. We'll go through in the opposite direction and see what this is like. Okay, in this opposite direction, the grading is just slightly different. So we should see maybe a bit of tire lift at the front there and we'll see the traction control doing its thing. Let's see if it bottoms out here as well on the way in. Tiny little touch there, but nothing too bad. It's just a little sideways there. But again, no nonsense. It is just doing what it's meant to be doing, which is sensational. So, all right, let's turn around. We'll give this one more crack in off-road height and just see if it makes it any different at all. Okay, let's give this another shot here. This really just gives you that little bit of extra ground clearance so you don't uh, knock the front end there. Probably not gonna make too much of a difference here because this is pretty, pretty light off-roading, but uh, we'll see how it goes anyway. Okay, let's have a roll onto the throttle. That's interesting, it is having to work a little harder there on the entry. That's okay. Cool, all right, uh, we'll turn around and I'll run through that one more time. It's interesting, just in the normal height, it actually seemed to be doing a, a good enough job there. So maybe this off-road height is more just if you know you need to be clearing taller objects, but it um, sort of really doesn't make too much of a difference. So come through again, and I'll drop this into here. It is. Yeah, front didn't touch then, so that was a little better. Still kicks a little sideways coming out of that, but not the end of the world. Yeah, a lot of flexing around this here with this rubber seal. So it probably needs just a little bit of greasing, I reckon. Okay, so it is time for the 30% hill. Uh, like I said, when we explained all of this, I'm gonna stick this in low range. So uh, I'll leave it in mud ruts mode and then we'll pop it into low range as well. So you go into neutral, hit low range. It flicks into low range, tells you that it's done that. It's also lifted the suspension to off-road height as well. And then for the rest, I'm just gonna leave it pretty much where it is. So we'll see how this goes. I have high confidence that this will make it, but you never know. So let's see what happens. Right, here we go. Gee, they're quite deep ruts when you get up to them. All right. Oh, I just, just walking up here without any dramas. You can hear the relays here doing all their stuff for the traction control, and it just feels incredibly effortless walking up there. So that is a really good setup, and I, I love the way that, that has just gone up there without any dramas. Now, before we try and go up the 45%, we're gonna try our descent. So it's a button here for hill descent control. And the good thing is you can actually set the speed that it's gonna run here using cruise control switches, and then it'll crawl over the edge. You can also pop the camera on as well for this view, because you can actually see through that, which I like. And then you can also 
see through this as well. So they really have thought of everything here when it comes to off-roading in these camera angles. So there's our line just there. I'll just let go of the brake, send it over the edge and see what happens. Yeah, nice, that is doing a really good job. It's controlling that descent beautifully. Yeah, I just feel like it is fully in charge of all that. So yeah, excellent hill descent control there. That is a really nice setup. Okay, so time to try this. Now, this is the first car we've tried here. I don't even know if it's gonna make it up, so we'll see what happens. Um, I'll just stay on the mud rut setting and we'll see what happens there. I've got the suspension lifted. Let's see how we go. Uh, with all of these, I'm just gonna try keep a uniform throttle level as well, just to see how it climbs. And that'll give us a good indication of how they perform. All right, we're already starting to slip there. I'm gonna stop there because we're just digging a hole. So I'm gonna roll out of that. Like I mentioned earlier, it is super sketchy here. So I don't really wanna dig a massive hole if we don't have to. So I'm gonna try that once more with just a little bit more pace and a little bit more throttle. We'll see how it goes. If this doesn't make it up here, I'm suspecting the rest of them won't. So all right, let's try a bit more throttle, a bit more pace. That's it. It's kind of just digging itself a hole there. I'm gonna try one more thing now, which is lowering the suspension. It might just be that it's on its tippy toes there and not really progressing as much as it should. The hill descent control works in reverse as well. Okay, here we go here. So pop that back into drive. We'll just lower the suspension a little bit. Let's see how this goes. Here we go. Same story again, a bit more aggressive with the throttle. Lower suspension height. Ah, there we go, that's made a massive difference. I don't like that though. It is being really fussy with the gears there. So right as we got to the top, it decided it wanted to drop down a gear and it really killed our momentum. And that is the last thing that you want when you're trying to get up a grade like that. So um, yeah, I think I probably should have just gone in and held the gears on my own, but without paddle shifters, there is a bit of faffing to make that happen. So yeah, look, uh, Land Rover Defender, immensely capable. And you can see there that you just need to be in the right setting. And sometimes the setting that it tells you to be in isn't the right setting. So you should always, in a situation like that, try and just change some of these settings for yourself just until you get to the point where you comfortable with it. So um, yeah, I'll be interested to see how the rest of the SUVs go here, given this has the all-terrain center and rear diff locks. Um, I think some of the, the lighter terrain vehicles are going to struggle, but um, that is what this test is for, I guess. Okay, so Pajero Sport. Uh, this is an interesting one because you can run it in two-wheel drive high range to save fuel. You can also run it in four-wheel drive high range on sealed surfaces. Uh, with some of the ute-based SUVs, you can't actually do that. So this is kind of unique in the segment. If you do want to understand why you can't actually run some of these on sealed surfaces in four-wheel drive high range, click up here to watch a video we shot previously that explains it, but we're gonna do two-wheel drive high range first, and we'll come back again for four-wheel drive high range to see how it goes. So, all right, we are on the rollers. We'll come to a stop just there. Okay, roll onto the throttle. Rolling back a little bit, but I can feel traction control biting. You can see that light flashing there. And then away it goes, nice and easily. Okay, so we'll switch over to four-wheel drive high range. You can see it uh, doing its thing there. We'll just wait for that to complete. Sometimes it takes a little while. There we go. Okay, so same story again. We'll come on, come to a stop, and then roll onto the throttle. Oh, that's excellent. That has barely even moved. It's just moving along really nicely. So yeah, really good demonstration there of how good the traction control system here is. That is um, excellent job for Pajero Sport. Let's head over to the moguls. Now, offset mogul, um, I'm gonna leave this in four wheel drive high range, just the road setting. I'm not gonna lock the center diff. Uh, we'll see how it goes first. If it, if it does struggle, we can lock the center diff or even go down to locking the rear diff on this as well if we need to, but we'll see how it performs. Okay, so we'll do our flex test. Switch off our parking sensors as well. Bring that into that spot just there. See what this feels like. It is catching a tiny bit there. So the body is flexing a fair bit there once we're in that little seesaw condition. Uh, I'll roll onto the throttle now, see how it goes out of here. 
a bit more throttle. Nice. So traction control intervened there, gave us everything that we needed, and then just walked it out. So yeah, it is a really good traction control system. We actually found with the Triton when we tested it here that it was just really confident through this sort of stuff as well. And that's without the center diff being locked. So I'll tell you what, maybe we'll go back through it uh, this way and then lock the center diff just to see if it does feel any different. Okay, so I'll flick that around, wait for center diff to lock. The only downside to this system is it does take a little while for all this stuff to engage. It sort of doesn't happen right away, which is a little bit annoying. There we go, okay, that's on. It actually has different modes here as well that you can select. So let's go through to mud. We'll see how that assists with the traction control. All right, we'll drop it into here. See if that front end touches down. Oh, nice. That is even more effortless now with um, that centre diff locked. So, yeah, this is this is such a good setup. They've done wonders here with the traction control system. It is a really impressive way to do things. So, yeah, good job, Mitsubishi. I'm excited to see what it does down here in our gradients. Okay, so it is time for the gradient. Uh, I should probably call out as well, this is on highway terrain tyres. So uh, in terms of the other modes we have, we have rear diff lock, we have the centre diff lock, uh, we have low range, hill descent control, and also a couple of drive modes here as well. So uh, I'm gonna pop this into low range now. We twist that around, wait for that to enter low range. So it actually disables that forward collision warning there and traction control. So let's see what happens. That's left in mud and snow. All right, let's do our climb. I've left the rear diff unlocked for the moment just to see what happens. But um, yeah, I, I have high hopes given what transpired earlier. So here comes our first mogul. Nice, 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 excellent. All right, good job, Padge Sport, very nice. Okay, hill descent. Um, so we had a complaint from a couple of commenters that hill descent controls in some of these vehicles need it to be stopped before you roll over. And wasn't the case in the Ranger and, and that sort of stuff, but maybe in some of these older ones it is the case, so we'll do that. Uh, turn hill descent control on so it's active. I'm going to roll out of the brake now and let it just go over the edge and we'll see what happens. So it is going pretty slowly there. So we're dropping into that. I'm just wondering if I can control descent speed using cruise control. So I'm flicking up and it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. But this descent speed is very slow and it is very controlled. Like there's no dramas there at all. If I go a little on the throttle and then roll out of the throttle, it allows it to pick up a bit of speed. But it all feels very controlled without too many issues there. So yeah, good job with hill descent on Pajero Sport. Okay, so 45% gradient. I'm gonna give this the best chance it can get by locking the rear diff. I'm gonna wait for that to engage. It takes a little bit of time for it to do its thing. There we go. Uh, I did notice on the 30% grade that it was flaring as we were getting closer to the top there. So we'll see what happens when I sort of leave it here in drive and just keep that throttle nice and gradual. So we'll go back. All right, this time around, I'll just have a little bit more pace. A bit more throttle this time. Okay, so it's flaring for some reason, and it's really quite annoying, but I think we're gonna make it up here. Oh, sensational, awesome. So I don't know whether the flaring is intentional or not, but it kind of hindered and helped. So I was able to just stay in the throttle a little harder. And to be honest, this actually felt like it walked up there better than the Defender did. So I just got to give it to Mitsubishi. They've done such a good job with this four wheel drive system. I'm just really impressed with how it's all come together and how user friendly it all is as well. So we are in the Toyota Fortuna. So just as a friendly reminder, this uses a full-time two-wheel drive system on sealed services. So that's stuff like your standard road. Uh, you can't run it on four-wheel drive high range unless you're on an unsealed surface. So this test is gonna be done in two-wheel drive, then uh, four-wheel drive as well. There's no real sort of other fancy stuff here outside of a rear diff lock, low range, and a hill descent as well. So 
Let's see how we go. And by the way, this is on highway tyres as well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it performs in the off-road portion of this. Okay, we're on the rollers now. We'll come to a stop. And I'll just roll onto the throttle. Here we go. Only a little bit of rollback there. And then traction control is doing its thing to get us out of here. Very nice. Yeah, very nicely done. Okay, we will head back down and give this a crack in full drive high range. Okay, let's try 4H here. See so, yeah, how that fares. Wait for that to activate. There it is. Line up our roller. Okay, come to a stop. Okay, here we go. That's great, didn't even move there. So in this 4H mode, it's basically sending 50% of torque to the front axle and 50% of torque to the rear. So in theory, you have double the ability to get traction. And it means that it should make stuff like that much easier if you ever encounter it. But even in two-wheel drive there, it did a perfectly fine job without any dramas. Now, for the offset mogul, I'm going to leave this in four-wheel drive high range. Uh, even though it does have a rear diff lock, we'll just see how it goes on its own. Test these traction control systems. We'll see what our flex is like as well for the door. Drop that into just that spot right there. Yep, really nice and solid. So roll onto the throttle now. Okay, traction control light is flashing. Excellent, very nicely done. No problems there at all. So yeah, traction control bit, it did exactly what it was meant to do. Really nicely tuned system. We'll turn around and head in the opposite direction to see if we can uh, catch it napping, but I'm pretty sort of confident it should be fine. Okay, drop her in. Goes. Any touching? No, that felt good. Roll onto the throttle. Yeah, nice. Piece of cake. Very good. Um, I don't know. Well, I know when we did the Ute test here, we were pretty surprised by how well the the Hilux Rogue did, and I mean they share the same platform beneath the skin and. I don't know, it just seems all pretty straightforward to me. So let's head over to the gradients and see how it goes down there. Okay, 30% hill. So uh, we're going to drop down into low range now. I'm gonna leave the rear diff unlocked just to see what happens. We will give it another crack with the rear diff locked if it doesn't get up there, but we'll see how we go. So it goes taking off nine seconds. See, traction control is off. Forward collision is off. Cannot believe how easily this is walking up. Yeah, really nice, uh, really nice attempt there, and no dramas, no fussiness with the transmission, and we are on highway tyres as well. So yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so hill descent control. This has a 360 camera, uh, so I'm going to activate it by pushing this. Quality is not amazing, but it kind of gives us an idea of what's happening. Um, and then I'm going to engage hill descent control. Same story again. I'm going to just get to the crest of this hill, and then I will um, basically make sure we've come to a stop and then let it roll down. So there's a stop, off the brake. I can't change speed with cruise control. It's probably a tiny bit quick for my liking. Look at his getting down there, but I would love to just be able to vary the speed a little bit. Uh, that'd be my only complaint with that. Okay, 45% great. I'm going to lock the rear diff for this one. Press that, wait for it to activate. Taking its time. There we go. Okay, that's activated. Let's see what happens now. Here we go. These highway tires probably aren't going to love this, but let's see how it goes. Okay, we're kind of stuck there. I'll go back down. Okay, here we go. So a little bit more pace this time. Okay. It's already starting to slip a little bit there. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, all right, bang, we made it fantastic. All right, so it really just did need a little bit more pace. This kind of falls into the same category as Pajero Sport. It's a bit of a mountain goat. It'll just climb up there, and it shows you that even with these highway tyres, 
It is such a good four-wheel drive system that's willing to send torque where it needs to go to get it up a hill like that. So, yeah, really impressed with this. And again, just throwing back to Defender, you had to really work Defender to get up there, whereas this, um, this actually did quite an impressive job. Sangyong Rexton. Look, it could be a car that some of you may never have heard of, but um, be interested to see how it goes here on our uh, little setup because this is one of those uh, SUVs that has two-wheel drive high range permanently and then four-wheel drive high range for unsealed surfaces. So it'll be interesting to see how it actually fares here, but there's only one way to find out. It's in eco drive mode at the moment, so I'll just leave it there. We'll see how it goes. We'll roll on to our rollers and come to a stop. Okay, so onto the throttle. Uh, okay, there we go. So this has one of those auto locking rear diffs. Basically, when you get a delta between one side of the rear axle and the other, it automatically engages the rear diff lock. I don't love these because you don't actually have any control over it, but you can see there in that situation where you have one of your wheels slipping, it basically fires that diff lock immediately to get you out of that situation. So now what we'll do is switch this over to 4H, line up our roller. I'll be interested to see if it actually does the same thing here and auto locks the rear. So come to a stop there, get onto the throttle. Yeah, there it is, it just locked the rear immediately. So yeah, look, it, it achieves the goal of being able to get out there and, and do that side of things, but it's just not a system you have any control of uh, as a driver. So not the best setup in my opinion. Okay, mogul time, let's see how we go. So in addition to that auto-locking rear diff, uh, it also has a hill descent control, so we'll test that out shortly. So I've left it here in four high, we'll do our little flex test first. Get it into that spot just there. No dramas there at all, very nice, and roll onto the throttle now. Nice, that was the rear diff locking. It's quite unsophisticated because it locks, you finish what you're doing, then it unlocks. And then when you need it again, it has to relock. So, you know, I can just see that not being overly useful when you actually need it to just be locked. So, yeah. All right, let's give that one more shot in the opposite direction. Pop it into here. Okay, let's see if it touches down on that other side. Let's see if we can kill that parking sensor. Okay, here we go. it is, that's locked, kicks it a little sideways. And that front wheel in the air, bring it back down. Yeah, it, it really is just quite clumsy the way that it's locking and unlocking there. I just don't understand why I can't just have a button that says lock and then it just takes care of it feeling like that. But look, it did uh, get through that without any dramas, no uh, overt flex either. So yeah, win-win. Okay, so come up to our gradient. So worth calling out at this point as well, we've got highway tyres on this car, but this car also has aftermarket suspension. So it's using an Ironman suspension setup. So it's a nitro gas setup, lifts the body by 40 mil. And I'll be curious to see how it goes on here because I think this will give it that sort of clearance that it really needs. So I'm gonna pop this into low range. I'll put this into power mode as well, just to see if that makes much of a difference. Given it has an auto locking rear diff, this should um, kind of just do everything on its own. I am concerned about it kicking us sideways though. So so we'll see what happens as we climb. Oh, it's coming out of no, it's all right, it's getting there. Yeah, nice, excellent. So it really wasn't hyperactive there. It felt like the rear diff engaged and then it stayed engaged. And that kind of meant that it could just crawl up there without any problems and um, yeah, so I don't know, I'd still love the ability to lock it myself, but the fact that it got up there without uh, any dramas, I think is definitely a good sign. Okay, so uh, time to test out hill descent control. We'll get to the top of the hill here. Love this camera, the quality is fantastic. I can clearly see where the car's going over. I'll press the hill descent control button, so it's active down there. And again, roll out of the brake there. Doesn't feel like I can use cruise control to slow it down. Oh, this is, yeah, quite sloppy. It's going way too quick for this descent. Yeah, that's really not a very good system. 
just randomly brought us to a complete stop down the bottom and then started going again. So yeah, that just felt really clumsy and I really want to be able to have that granular speed control. It really didn't feel like I had any control over how fast that was going to go down the hill. I'm noticing this steering just goes randomly heavy at times. And I don't know whether that is the steering motor just not having enough grunt, but um, yeah. Okay, we'll see how it goes up here, but um, all right, I've left that in low range. Rear diff will lock on its own, just gradual throttle now, just to see how it climbs. It's really struggling now. We'll go back down. I'll try just a little bit more pace. Okay, here we go. Got a bit more pace now. It's not going anywhere. I will try just one last time. Let's see if we can get it to progress any further. If we can't, we'll call this one a fail. So look, in theory, I could probably just keep the throttle all the way in and it would just cause a big old mess here, but I don't really want to have to do that. No, that's a no-go. So look, it was a commendable uh, effort so far, but yeah, it was our 45% gradient that killed it here for the Rexton. Okay, Ford Everest V6. This one's running the 21 inch wheel, which is a highway terrain tire. So it'll be interesting to see how that, uh, how that goes when we go off-roading. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is run this in two wheel drive high range first, and then we'll switch it over to four wheel drive automatic to see how it goes. Outside of that, we have a four wheel drive high range, four wheel drive low range, rear diff lock. Uh, we also have a hill descent control as well, plus some off-road modes. So we'll play with those shortly. Okay, we are on our rollers, come to a full stop. And then just roll onto the throttle. Just back a little bit there. Picks up traction control. And away we go, very nice. All right, we'll go back down and try 4A. Okay, switch this into 4A. It's a pretty seamless process, it all happens. Nice and quickly. Okay, we're on our rollers. And come to a stop. Okay, here we go. Yeah, nice, just watching that out the side window there, it hooks up and away we go. Yeah, very seamless stuff, okay. Uh, over to our Mogul. So I've left it in four-wheel drive automatic. We might uh, switch this over to Mud Ruts. That's one of the modes. So we've got Slippery, Mud Ruts and Sand. Pop it into Mud Ruts. Actually switches it to 4H. Leave it in 4A just because we did that with the Pajero Sport. Want to make it nice and even. Actually, yeah, okay, so it's telling me here the selected four-wheel drive mode is not available because it locks the rear diff in mud ruts. So I'll take that out of mud ruts and just go back to normal and pop that into 4A. Rear diff unlocked. We'll see how we go with our flex test first. Okay, so we'll pop it into here. And then just into there, so let's see that. Nice, nice and strong, and then we'll roll onto the throttle. Very good, I can feel the traction control working quite hard there. A little bit of a touch down on the way down. Excellent. Yeah, very good, that traction control system is fantastic. All right, let's pop it into mud ruts, uh, but I will disengage the rear diff lock and we'll just see what that feels like in full drive high range. Here we go. So difference between 4A and 4H is that in 4A it can apportion different amounts of torque to the front and rear, whereas in 4H it's basically a 50-50 split. So we'll see if it performs any differently here. No touch down there, I'll flip that parking sensor off. A little slip there. Traction control is sorting that out for us, so no dramas. Let's roll into its next divot just there. Touching down on the bottom there, so clearance might be a little bit of an issue. Beautiful. Outside of that, excellent uh, tuning there on the traction control system, really cool. And I love this display that pops up here when you change into that mode as well, kind of just gives you an overview of what's going on around the car. 30% gradient. All right, so I'm going to leave this in uh, mud ruts mode, but I will slot it down into low range. So just press 4L. It says 4x4 shift in progress, so that is engaged. I'll leave the rear diff unlocked for our first attempt to see how it goes. I'm hoping that this will be able to use all of its traction controls and stuff to 
to make this as effective as possible. So here we go. I can hear a little bit, but I can hear it working. Yeah, nice. I've literally just kept throttle in the same position and it has done all of that work for me. So yeah, it wasn't the prettiest thing in the world, but we got there in the end. Um, yeah, it took a lot more effort than it did in uh, stuff like the Patch Sport and the Fortuna as well. So. Um, yeah, and that could be down to these highway terrain tyres. Might be the Fortuna was on literally highway tyres. So, yeah, look, I uh, didn't love that, but um, we'll see how it goes as we get a little bit harder. So, hill descent, uh, you activate that here on the screen. You push that just there. I think we can actually adjust the speed of this using cruise control, or maybe we can't. No, we can. Cool. So, I'll line this up. I've got this screen running as well so I can see what's happening over the edge. It's one of those ones that you don't have to come to a full stop to actually use the hill descent control. A kilometre an hour there, we'll see how it goes. This is a really good system, I like that. Lots of control over the descent speed here. I can then dial it in and out as required with the cruise control. So yeah, that is really, really good there. Quite impressed with that hill descent control. Okay, so time to try and go up the 45%. I'm gonna lock the rear diff here. Uh, it actually engages and disengages really quickly, which I like. Uh, we're in low range. Let's see how it goes. This is pretty much the most aggressive setting that it has here for this climb. Okay, let's dig in there. Pop it in reverse, head back down. Give that one more shot, just a little bit more throttle this time with a bit more pace. Here we go, pop that into drive. A little bit more pace here. All right, digging us a hole there. Come back down, give it one last attempt here. Just a little bit more pace and we'll see what happens. All right. There is no height adjustable suspension here either, so I think it could be these highway terrains just giving us a bit of grief. No, the second it falls into that little divot there, it just doesn't go anywhere, and we end up just digging a hole. So, all right, that is a fail for V6 Everest. I'll be keen to see whether it performs better with the four-cylinder, given that's got the proper sort of meteor all-terrain tyres on it. So, let's see how we go. I'm excited for this. This is the big bus, the Lexus LX. Reason it's in this test is because it shares a platform with the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 series. It's available with seven seats, so it meets the criteria. And in Australia, this is the only version of the 300 series platform that actually has a petrol engine. So we're really keen to sort of have that involved as well. So full-time four-wheel drive, uh, we're gonna attack our roller uh, just in four-wheel drive high range. There are a number of other settings that we're going to play with here. So we have height adjustable suspension. We have a center diff lock, but no rear diff lock. It does have a limited slip differential on the rear axle. And then you also have a number of drive modes as well. So here comes our roller. And then onto the throttle. Let's get in there. Didn't roll back, which is good. Just very gradual in terms of how quickly it leaves. Yeah, nice. No dramas there at all. So pass on our roller. Okay, mogul time. So we have a number of drive modes for on-road driving, but I'm gonna press the MTS button, which lets you select off-road modes. And I'm gonna go over, so you've got auto, dirt, sand, mud. We'll go over to mud. So that's jacking the suspension up to the off-road height. See how that goes. Oh, it's also disabled traction control. It must just be changing the traction control so that we do have a little bit more slip when needed. Let's see how we go here. So we'll drop it in. It's such a big bus, this thing. Um, okay, so do our flex test. Yeah, it's fine. That is all good. Okay, here we go. So I'll roll onto the throttle now. See how the traction control works. It's getting there, it's getting there. All right, cool, that's the back wheel off the ground. All right, and then onto the throttle here. 
Nice, very good. So decent traction control system there. It seemed to sort itself out pretty nicely. Go back again and give that one more try in the other direction. Okay, here we go. Yeah, the extra height you're afforded here when it is in its higher off-road setting really gives it a decent amount of clearance. We're not touching really anything there as we move through this, so we'll see how it feels now. Yeah, the traction control is doing a really good job here at just managing all of this and just making sure that we don't have a situation where, you know, it's out of control. And I can see there that back wheel is pretty much off the ground. That is a lot of articulation it's getting there, which is cool. And then just on the throttle. Very nice. It's actually a bit of a surprise package. I seem to walk through that without any problems at all. 30% gradient time. So I'm going to leave this in mud ruts, but what I am going to do is drop it down into low range. So I'll put that back into neutral. Flick this switch here into low range. That is done. Let's see how it goes up here. I have a lot of confidence in this. I haven't actually locked the center diff yet. That'll be our next step if we can't make it up here. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, so far so good. <laughs> it is a piece of cake. You really can see all of that 300 series heritage under the body here. This is remarkable how well this is going off-road. That was incredibly effortless on highway tyres as well. But all right, uh, let's see how we go with a bit of hill descent. So hill descent control, this is an interesting system. So this has basically a crawl control that works downhill and uphill as well. So you push this button here and then you have uh, five different levels of crawl speed that you can use the mode select switch for. So let's go to level three, a little bit of vision out the front there as well. See how this goes. Those cameras are fantastic so you can clearly see what's going on out front there. Line up these ruts. Okay, I'll drop that down a touch. Yeah, very good. I'll increase the speed on that. Go all the way up to five. Yeah, nice. That is going down here with nice prowess. So very impressed with that. Very good. I like that. Oh, I will point out as well, it actually has this turn assist function. Um, we demonstrated this when we shot the 300 series Land Cruiser, but it allows it to do a much tighter turn by locking individual wheels and basically sending it around a tighter turning radius. Really cool feature. And if you do come across a path or something like that, where you do have a tight turn coming up, just a great way to get the car articulating around that turn without having to go back and forward a thousand times. Okay, so 45% gradient. So let's give this a shot first with it in all of its aggressive settings. So I'm gonna lock the center diff here by pushing that. And then we're gonna see how we go up here. It is still in its high setting in the mud mode. Just on the throttle. Let's stop there. Let me just go back and just have a little bit more pace at that. Okay, here we go. So a little bit more pace this time. I don't want to dig a massive hole here, so we'll see how it goes. There's a big beast to be moving. No, nothing there. We'll go back, try it one last time, just with a tiny bit more pace. Okay, here we go. A little bit more pace this time. Okay, that's definitely helping. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, we're so close. We are so close. Come on. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, we just made it. All right, that was that was close. We literally just made that. So, um, yeah, let's go back down. I'm going to try this uh, crawl control going up the hill. See if I just leave it in the hands of the vehicle, whether it actually helps it achieve exactly that goal. Right, so the whole idea here is you can set the ascent speed and then the vehicle does all of the driving on its own. So I'm gonna press crawl control, I'll set it to like uh, speed two or something. I've got my foot off the throttle. I'll actually just get it to the base of the hill and then I'll let my foot off the throttle. So it's now crawling up in speed setting three. We'll see if allowing it to manage the ascent actually lets it get past that spot where we couldn't go any further. seem to make too much of a difference. It is doing stuff, but I think we're just digging a hole here. Try a bit more pace. No, try less pace. 
No, no bingo. No, no go. All right, so look, electronics are good, but I think uh, when it comes to that crawl control mode, probably are just better off doing it yourself uh, if you do really need to make sure you want to make it up there. Okay, so we are in the Land Cruiser 300 series. So like I said before with the Lexus, this is only available with a diesel in Australia, a V6 diesel. Uh, and this here is the Sahara. The whole reason we picked this is our requirement for this test was seven seats. And uh, that was our first port of call for any of these vehicles. The Lexus wasn't available for us in seven seats, which is why we went with the top spec, but this one was. Now, this uses a full-time four-wheel drive system. In addition to that, you also have center diff lock and also that turn assist function. You can also go into low range as well, plus a hill descent control, and along with some drive modes as well that we'll run through and we go for a bit of a spin. We're on all-terrain tyres as well. And it has just rained, so this is going to be interesting. Um, all right, we are going onto our rollers now. Let's line this up. Okay, there they are, and then we'll move on to the throttle. Yeah, not too bad. So it's moving off slowly, but... It is sort of uh, pretty confidently sort of getting getting the job done. So that's a pass there for the rollers. Okay, mogul time. So in this particular spec, we have no height adjustment for the suspension, but we do have the multi-terrain select system. So I'm gonna move over to mud, Let's see how it goes. I'll be interested to see how this is in terms of clearance and articulation compared to the Lexus, which had the whole shebang there in terms of height adjustment. So. It's sort of bottoming out something there, which is interesting. So we'll come into our door flex, which is just there. Nice, that opens and closes okay. And now we'll roll onto the throttle and see how this goes. I can see that rear wheel turning, but traction control is biting and letting us get out of that, which is great. And then we'll back onto the throttle. Yeah, traction control is doing a good job here. Very good, excellent. All right, let's turn around and head back and give it another crack in the other direction. Okay, so we'll line up our hole. Okay, there it is. All right, and come out of this. All right, and drop the rear end in there as well. But slightly seesawing there. And we'll just roll onto the throttle here. It does feel like it is bottoming out a section of the car there as we come out of here. Oh, that's not too bad. Excellent. All right, we're done. Now, I did notice when we were just leaving our mogul area here, this still has that knocking sound. You can hear it just there coming from the front suspension. We first heard this when we first started testing 300 series Land Cruise, and they clearly still haven't fixed it. So disappointed with that. Um, obviously something that needs to be sorted and that they haven't spent a great deal of time on actually sorting. Okay, we're at our 30% gradient now. So I'm going to put this into low range. I'll leave the center diff uh, unlocked for the moment. We'll just see how it goes. If I do need to come back and have another shot at it, I'll, uh, I'll then lock it, but we'll see what happens here. I like that view with the cameras, that's cool. So just gradual throttle application here. It is getting up without any problems at all. Very, very impressed with that. Nice, nice, nice. Excellent, made it all the way to the top. Not a problem in the world. Okay, so hill descent, uh, just like the Lexus, this has uh, crawl control and you can use that for downhill ascent. So we come to a stop, press crawl control and you can adjust the speed using the mode switch here. So we'll go to speed three and then I'll press the camera view button as well so we can see where we're heading. Okie dokie, here we go, we'll line up our ruts. All right. It's doing a good job to try to slow it down a touch. Very nice. It's just a very controlled descent. Everything is happening as it should. It's sort of, yeah, very straightforward. So very cool system. And I love that it is just super easy to use as well. Okay, so having another crack now at our 45% climb, I'm gonna lock the center diff now. There it is down there and we'll see how we go. So gradual throttle to start with. If we can't get up, I'll have another bite at it. 
uh, Lexus couldn't make it up here. So here with gradual throttle, it's actually getting up without any issues at all. That is awesome. So I think it does show you there that uh, the tyres make a difference. This is on all terrains. The Lexus was on uh, highway tyres and this just walked up there without any problems. So uh, again, I like how simple it is to use. Let's go back down. I might actually give this one more crack with uh, the sort of crawl control as well and see if it makes it up just as effortlessly. Righto, so let's see how it goes. It was pretty impressive getting up there just then. So if I pop this into crawl, set the speed to that mid speed. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, so it did rain during our lunch break, so Let's see if that potentially helps the Land Cruiser get up here where the Lexus couldn't. Yeah, it looks like it's going to get stuck at that same spot. It's almost like it just needs a stack more momentum before it actually sort of makes it anywhere. So I'm going to come back down and just try a higher speed there in crawl control just to see if that helps at all. Okay, here we go. So I'll go to the maximum crawl control speed, see if that makes it any better. Yeah, I guess I don't actually know where you would use this function where you would want the car to control everything that's going on because I just don't know that it's going to do it as confidently as the driver would. Oh, here we go. No, no, we might be getting somewhere here. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's actually, I think we might actually make it all the way up here. So it just took a bit of pace. See, the Lexus wouldn't do that. So... That is unreal. Awesome. So crawl control actually works. So I guess that shows you that these systems have been tuned for this stuff to work uh, in conditions like that. You just have to have a couple of nibbles at it. But um, this is lining up to be one of the best here, I reckon. It really is just idiot proof. And I can just feel anyone being able to jump into this and just give it a crack themselves. Okay, it is time for the patrol. I guess it is the arch nemesis to the Land Cruiser. So I'm excited to see how this uh, pans out. Has started raining again, just our luck. Uh, this is on all terrains. This also uses a full-time four-wheel drive system. You can lock it into four-wheel drive high range. You've got four-wheel drive low range available to you as well. Rear diff lock, a few drive modes, and hill descent control as well. So let's give the rollers a shot and see how it goes. Okay, so on the rollers there, we'll come to a stop. Okay, and then onto the throttle. Very nice. Took off there without any problems. Hooked up nicely, so good traction control system. Let's head over to our offset mogul. Rain is properly falling now. Um, okay, so offset mogul, we're just going to, there is no like mud mode. They've just got sand on road, rock and snow. So I'll just leave it in on road, I guess, uh, and in auto and we'll see if it sort of runs into any dramas. It seems that the longer wheelbase cars are favoured here just because of the way these um, divots are set apart and the moguls are sort of distanced. But we'll see how it goes. All right, so that's in there. We'll check out door close. Yeah, that is grabbing ever so slightly. So the body is flexing a fair bit there. Uh, roll onto the throttle now. Let's see how this goes. Rear wheel is off the ground now. A little bit more throttle. Yeah, it's a very active traction control system, but it's quite effective in terms of doing what it needs to do there. So we'll spin around now and have another shot in reverse. Okay, here we go. Drop that into here. No touching down either. So in terms of ground clearance, it's actually pretty impressive. The rear into here as well. and then we'll roll onto the throttle again. Yeah, very good. <laughs> it's like a walk in the park for the patrol. Very nice. Okay, time for our first hill. <laughs> it's properly wet out here. Uh, so I'm going to pop this into low range, so into neutral. Slide that over to 4L. We'll leave the rear diff unlocked just to see if it gets up here first. If it doesn't, then we'll come back for another crack. Okay, so... Here we go. Yeah, nice and smooth so far. The ride is fantastic in this. Really don't get thrown around too much. I'm just keeping throttle gradual. It is walking up here. This thing is an absolute beast. I love it. Okay, all right. It definitely needs something harder. So let's uh, give Hill Descent a crack and then we'll head over and try and do some climbing. 
Okay, hill descent. So I'll creep up to the start of our descent here. And then I'll engage hill descent control. So one push of that. That's now active. I'll just let go of the brake. See how it goes. Let's see if I've got any um, finer throttle control here. No, it doesn't look like it. It's actually going down at a pretty reasonable pace there. Yeah, that's actually really nicely controllable. Yep, no concerns at all. Excellent job, patrol, all right. Now it's time to see if we can actually get back up the hill. Okay, for this run, I'm gonna lock the rear diff, so we'll press that. Let's see how we go. All right, so we'll go constant throttle just to start with, and we can play with that if we need to. <laughs> you are joking. It is just walking up here like I'm not even trying. That is seriously, seriously good. <sighs> Wondering whether this has just dethroned the Land Cruiser as the off-road king. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but it is just doing everything so effortlessly. Awesome. Jeep Grand Cherokee L. So we are on highway terrain tyres. And this is an interesting car because uh, here in Australia, this is only available with a naturally aspirated petrol V6. So I don't know how well it's gonna go, but it made our test because it also has the ability to do low range. So to kick things off, I've just got it in all of its auto settings. We'll run it over our rollers. And we'll see how it performs on the traction front. The uh, Gladiator Rubicon actually won our last off-road test, so I'm thinking this should do pretty well. It's obviously not like an off-road version, but you know, being a Jeep. Yeah, traction control isn't too bad. It was figuring out what it was doing and then it got us off there without too many problems. So pass on our roller test. Now, one thing I'll point out is this has height adjustable suspension. So we'll see how it fares here before I have to jack it up. I'll pop it into mud mode. There we go, mud mode is now selected. I don't know what that actually does. I've got an off-road display here that shows us uh, exactly what it's doing. Oh, it's actually lifting the suspension to our off-road height, which is probably going to be very welcome. It's left the transfer case unlocked. So we'll see if that actually works for us here or whether it actually variably adjusts that as it goes, but we'll see what happens. Door flex test. Oh. Yeah, that's flexing. You can actually hear that hitting on the body there. That's not very good. Okay, roll onto the throttle here. See how it goes. struggling, but it kind of got there in the end. Okay, so, hmm. okay, but not amazing. It kind of just struggled a little bit there to do what it needed to do. The car is also creaking as we're sort of moving over some of this uneven terrain, which isn't really very impressive. So we'll turn around now, have another crack at that in this direction. Let's see how we go. See how it fares through here now. There's the front end. Hopefully it doesn't touch down on the way through. Yeah, that rear door is creaking. Okay. Front wheel's off the ground there. there in the end so yeah the traction controls are having to work fairly hard but yeah we had so much body flex there now that door is just creaking as we're sort of moving along so obviously this doesn't feel like it's built for much off-roading so we'll see what it's like on our gradients uh, and see if it does improve with uh, putting it into low range okay so it is time to do our gradient climb i'm going to pop this into low range Push and hold that, we'll clunk there as it locks the transfer case. There are some other sort of screens here as well that give you an idea of what's going on. I might have it on the pitch and roll screen so we can see how this is faring. I'll leave it in mud mode. Uh, suspension is still raised and let's see how it goes. So constant throttle first. I don't actually have any more settings I can engage here. There's no diff locks or anything like that. So if it doesn't get up here, um, I'll give it one more shot and then we can Stuck here. 
fall. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't really speak there. It, is, it was trying really hard there. Uh, I'm glad we stayed in that because it got there in the end. But yeah, it was in struggle town getting up there. So um, it looks like it was the traction control that was doing all of the work there. It was doing a really great job of just limiting wheel slip, especially on these highway terrains. So um, yeah, look, that's a pass, but you had to really work for that. Okay, hill descent control. Uh, one of the things I like here is you can actually select that forward facing camera. It fills up the whole screen, which is great. So I'll turn on hill descent control. So you use the paddle shifters to adjust your descent speed. So we'll see how that goes as we come across the top here. Did find when we tested the normal Grand Cherokee, if you actually went down the hill in the lowest speed setting, and we just jammed the brakes on and it kicked the car sideways. So I'm just trying not to have the same thing happen to us here. Check that speed up a touch to five. Yeah, this is really good. So you can see that Jeep has the electronic side of stuff really well sorted. I can still hear that door creaking. <laughs> That's not great. But yeah, electronic side of things are really sorted and it just does all that well. It's just when you pair it with an engine like this, it's just naturally not going to be able to achieve what it would normally be able to achieve. So um, let's see how it goes on that climb. It might make it up, might not, but um, only one way to find out. Okay, so I've just left it in low range. It's the same setting that we used for our 30% grade. So gradual throttle to start with. Then we'll come back for more if we need to. Yeah, it's really struggling there. Okay, so we will come back. I'll go for a bit more throttle. See if we can get any further up. It's also starting to smell in the cabin as well. So uh, that sort of engine is starting to emit a fair bit of um, smell inside here. We are working it pretty hard, so we'll have another crack at this. No, okay, a little bit more speed this time. This will be the third and last time I try this, so here we go with a touch more pace. getting anywhere so all right that is a fail for our hill and look it was only really just a marginal pass on the the mogul climb there at 30 percent as well so um yeah look i kind of was expecting this result unfortunately with this engine it just really isn't built for this type of off-road driving it is good that it is there but you'd only want to be doing some pretty soft off-roading and i wouldn't want to be relying on this to get me out of any anything sort of uh, too serious we're in the Isuzu MUX, so this shares a platform with the D-Max, which means you get two-wheel drive high range for sealed surfaces, four-wheel drive high range for unsealed surfaces, four-wheel drive low range. You've got a rear diff lock that only works in low range and a hill descent control as well. But this has a button that we didn't have in the D-Max when we tested it here, because the D-Max failed this test uh, quite <laughs> spectacularly. Um, this is called a rough road mode. So I'm gonna try and take this in two-wheel drive first, then we'll go to full drive high range and I'll try rough road mode as well, which is meant to adjust traction control. So let's see how it goes. We're on the roller just there and I'll just move on to the throttle. Yeah, not very good. So it did the same thing that the D-Max did last time where it just rolls onto the roller and then it can't actually get traction. I've got my foot most of the way down there. I'll go full throttle now. Now starting to actually get somewhere. All right, there it is there. So let's go back again. We'll try it in four-wheel drive high range. Let's see how this goes. We'll move on to our roller and come to a stop and onto the throttle. Same thing again. Probably going to go all the way back and touch our... Okay, while we're here, I'll just actually switch on rough road mode now. So that's now active. Let's see what it does. Rolling onto the throttle. Oh, look at that. Now that is how you do it. That is doing a much better job now. So I don't know why that mode just isn't standard. It just seems that would be the most logical way to go about it. It literally just moves off like it should. So yeah, awesome. So rough road mode actually does something, which is good news. Now, Offset Mogul, um, I've left that in four-wheel drive high range without uh, rough road mode. So let's just see how it performs first 
in high range. Okay, so I'll do a door flex test. Just just a little bit further in. Now there. Okay, that is fine, and then we'll roll onto the throttle. Uh, we'll try rough road mode. Now yeah, it's engaged. Oh, it's so close. There it is. Okay, got there in the end. Not very glamorous, unfortunately. Rough road mode uh, helps, but only to a certain degree. It kind of... Um, it kind of just gives that uh, traction control just that little bit of flexibility to do what it needs to do. It just required a lot of persistence. So um, let's go back and give that one more shot now. Okay, so heading through in this direction. It's nice and soppy in there now. Ground clearance seems good. We're not really sort of touching down there, which is nice. Right, into the throttle there. Good. Very slippery through there, but we got there in the end. So yeah, rough road mode definitely helps. Could be just a little bit better though, but uh, it definitely makes a huge difference, especially compared to the D-Max, which didn't have it available. Okay, time for our gradient. I don't have the highest confidence here, but we'll see what happens. I'm gonna pop this into low range. Rough road mode is active. Haven't locked the rear diff yet. So if we can't get up, I'll come back down and lock the rear diff and see if it helps. So a constant throttle application through here. Okay. Oh yeah, baby. All right. Feeling good about this so far. Nice. There it is. Beautiful. Rough road mode for the win. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Good job, MUX. By the way, I should point out as well, it just did that on highway terrains as well. So, um, yeah, pretty impressive when you consider that it can do that sort of stuff with relative ease. Now, one of the complaints that you guys had last time when we did D-Max and I complained about how bad the hill descent control was, uh, was that we weren't stationary. So I've come to a full stop now. I've pressed the hill descent control button. There it is. So that's now active. It's gone green. I'm just going to let go of the brake. I'm going to let it do its own thing. Okay, this is actually descending <laughs> much better rate. Look at that, this is actually doing a pretty good job here. There you go. Okay, well, I'm happy to admit I was wrong. Uh, this hill descent control system only seems to work if you come to a full stop first. It's not quite as advanced as the systems that we've seen in some of the more expensive cars where you can just engage it and it will activate. Um, here you have to be at a full stop and then when it comes down, it actually is going down at a pretty decent pace. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is lock the rear diff just so we have this in its most aggressive setting. Looks like when the rear diff is locked, rough road mode doesn't actually work, which is fine. So we'll see how it goes. Constant throttle to start with and if we don't get up, I'll try having a bit more throttle. Maybe. Nice. <laughs> Sensational job for the MUX. That is really good. I don't know, it just seems like it climbed that far more confidently than it did when we were here in the D-Max, which failed that. So uh, yeah, really impressed with that. Uh, it could be the rain that's helped sort of the surface out there, but I think that uh, this straight out of the box is pretty damn impressive. So. Um, yeah, nice job there for the MUX. So it is Toyota Prado time, we're on all terrains here. This uses a full-time four-wheel drive system, shares an engine with the Fortuna, so 500 newton meters of torque. It is fairly old though, so uh, I'll be keen to see how it plays out today. Um, let's have a crack on the rollers here and see what happens. All right. Now they are there, we'll come to a stop, and then on the throttle. Oh, it's got a noisy traction control system. <laughs> that is funny. All right. 
Yeah, cool. Noisy traction control system, but it kind of just uh, works as it should, which is good news. Uh, this also, in addition to high range four wheel drive, has low range four wheel drive, a center diff lock, a rear diff lock, and also a hill descent control as well. So let's head to the moguls and test those out. So offset mogul, uh, we're going to leave it in high range four wheel drive, let's see what happens. Okay, we'll do our door flex first. Drop it into here. Oh, bombing out there. All right, All right I'll just stop there. Hmm. Yeah, it is kind of. That's no, okay. Sort of felt like it was grabbing, but it's not. So, all right, roll onto the throttle. Let's see how it goes. It is a noisy traction control system. It's kind of not really going anywhere. More throttle, more throttle. Actually doing anything? Yeah, it's turning that rear wheel, but nothing is actually happening. We'll go full throttle now. Nothing is happening at all. So, all right, that is a fail. We'll try one more time. Let's just see if we can get it to inch up before it starts. No, it's just sitting there with traction control flashing. I'll try switching traction control off just to see if that helps at all. No, it's now just spinning the wheels by the look of it. I'll stay in that just for a little bit. No. All right, so that is a fail for the Prado in our uh, pretty basic offset mogul. So yeah, it mustn't share a traction control system with the Fortuna because it wasn't able to do that. So I'll try going through in the opposite direction and just see if that is any better. But um, yeah, so far, not so good. Okay, we're gonna go back in the opposite direction. I've switched traction control back on just to see what the go is there, but we'll try this way. Let's see if that makes any difference at all. It doesn't have a great deal of clearance there either. It's sort of bottoming out. Close. Yeah, so this side seems to be okay, but we don't have as much resistance through here. Um, so yeah, I think it is just a traction control issue there, uh, which is preventing it from actually being able to proceed with any great pace. So yeah, a little bit disappointing there. I would have thought the Prado would have done okay. We can't just see what it does down here when we go attack the other moguls. Okay, so gradient time. Not full of confidence here, so we'll pop this into low range. Uh, what I'll do for the first run is leave the center diff and rear diff unlocked just to see how it goes. All right, here we go. So constant throttle again. It seems to have disabled traction control in low range, so I'll be interested to see what it does here. Yeah, there is still traction control because you can hear it uh, going crazy there. Whoop. All right, it's not loving that, so we're going to go back down. Going to inch it back down. Uh, this time around, I'm going to lock the center diff to see whether that helps us climb out of that. All right, there we go. It's locked now. Let's uh, climb in here. So now with that center diff locked, it's going to be sending 50% of torque to the front axle, 50% to the rear axle. Oh, it's really struggling here. Oh, come on, come on. All right, finally got there in the end. Ugh, it's a bit of a hairy experience. It really doesn't fill you with confidence. Um, yeah, so far out of all the cars we've driven up there, uh, this is probably line ball with the Jeep in terms of that lack of confidence feeling behind the wheel, uh, which is not something I thought I'd be saying about the Prado. Okay, hill descent control. Let's see how this fares. So same story, I'll come up to the top here. Uh, went to a stop, got a camera view out the front there. Not the best camera view though, but you can kind of make out what's going on. Turn on hill descent control. So it's gone green up the top there. All right, line up. Foot is off the brake. <laughs> the noise in here is out of control. It sounds terrible. 
Speed is good though, uh, so no issues there, but the noise in here is just so ridiculous. You can tell, um, you can tell it's quite an old system because it just feels very uncivilized and yeah, not really overly impressive. So, hmm. all right, uh, let's turn around and have a crack at this hill. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is lock the rear diff. So that red light is flashing, that's now active. All right, let's give this a shot. So constant throttle here, first run. We'll see how far it goes. Okay, that's feeling much more civilized there. Very nice. Okay, so all the Prado needed was to have every single button pushed inside the cabin for it to, to actually sort of work. So it does feel like it is the traction controls that are limiting this from actually getting anywhere. It's kind of like the D-Max in the sense that they didn't really do the traction controls very well and that is the limiting factor. When you switch all of this stuff off and it's down to just the four wheel drive system, it actually works pretty well and does what it needs to do. So rounding things out with the Ford Everest, this time it is the four cylinder version. Uh, it effectively runs the same way that the V6 does in terms of these four wheel drive modes. So you've got two wheel drive high range, four auto, four high, four L. We have a rear diff lock and we also have an off-road camera as well that was part of an optional pack. So uh, let's go two wheel drive high range first and see how this performs compared to the V6. Okay, so there's our roller. We'll get onto the throttle. Yeah, moves back a little bit, but then it sort of hooks up and gets moving without too many dramas. So let's go back and give that a crack in 4A. We'll come on to our rollers again. Okay, and then come to a stop. Here we go. Tiny little roll back. And it gets on and moves without any problems. So very good, all right. Off to our mogul. Okay, mogul time. So same story as the V6 Everest. We're gonna run through in 4A, just regular mode. See how that goes. And then we'll come back in mud ruts where it switches it over to 4H. So let's bring this across a little touch down there. Get this into our flex position. All good there. Roll onto the throttle. Struggling a tiny bit there, that's okay. Got there in the end. Mess around, touch down there as well. Yeah, clearance doesn't seem huge with this compared to the others. It's um, sort of touching down a whole lot more than we were in uh, the likes of the Fortuna. So uh, not sure what the deal is with that. Uh, we'll come back around now. We'll give it a shot in a mud ruts mode. And then I'll also switch the rear diff lock off just so we can try it without that first. Here we go. So this just adjusts the stability control there a little bit, just to give us a bit more leeway. We'll see if it actually makes a difference in the four cylinder version. Okay, rolling into that now. Okay. Let drop into that hole. I'm gonna slam the car down. Okay. Yeah, cool, okay. Cool, all right, got there in the end. Um, yeah, it seemed to have a bit more slip there than it did in the V6, but that could come down to it just being a lot wetter now than it was just before, but we got through it all in the end. Okay, time for our climb as it gets dark. Uh, I'm gonna pop this into low range, leave the rear diff unlocked for the moment. We'll just see how it goes in mud ruts mode without that. It has a pretty meaty set of tires on it too, so I'm suspecting it will just walk up here. Uh, the V6 struggled a bit here, but we'll see how it goes. Some constant throttle through here. Mm. All right, that is not working. So I'm gonna go back down. I'm gonna try locking the rear diff this time. Just see if that helps us. Yeah, it felt a little bit sketchy climbing up there, so let's try with rear diff lock this time. Um, okay, so pop that into drive, gauge the rear diff lock. All right, give that a shot. Okay. So same thing again, I'm just gonna keep the same level of throttle in there and just see how it goes. 
As this gets chewed up, it does become harder to climb here, but given this does have the all terrains, it really should be doing a much better job. Yeah, that's a problem. We're kind of getting into a position now where if it gets a little bit out of shape, <laughs> we can end up rolling the car on the way back down. So uh, I'm going to try it one last time, but uh, to me, this is feeling like a fail. So we'll give this one more crack here. We'll see how we go. Tiny bit more pace this time. No, it's just not getting over that little section there. Yeah, we're just not getting past that. And if I keep going here, there's a good chance we'll end up um, putting this thing on its lid. So, all right, that is a fail for the Ford Everest four cylinder, which means it doesn't get to graduate to our big hill, but we can do a hill descent just to make sure that all looks good. Okay, hill descent, uh, it's probably gonna be pretty much the same as uh, the V6 one, but you click on that just there, it tells you that hill descent control is ready. And I'll see if we can control it here using cruise control. Yeah, so I can speed up and slow down using cruise control. And I've got vision out the front there too, which is nice. Okay. There we go. Yeah, nice. Very nice and controlled descent. And I do love the fact that you can control the actual descent speed really easily using the buttons on the steering wheel there. So uh, Ford's obviously put a fair bit of work into that and it all works well, but fortunately didn't really work well for our regular hill. Okay, so um, last thing we're going to do, because in our last video, a lot of you said that by the end of the day, maybe the hill would have been better or worse, depending on the conditions. So what we thought we'd do is run our first car through, which was the Defender, one last time, just to show that it could still get up these obstacles, especially since the um, Everest struggled so much here. So let's see how it goes. All right, so... It's climbing up, no dramas there at all. So even with the rain, it all stayed sort of fairly uh, decent there. So let's head back down and we'll do our 45% climb now as well. Okay, so time for the 45. Same story again, I'm just going to roll into it the same way that we did earlier. Just make sure that it will get up there. Yeah, it is still doing this annoying flaring thing, but it's uh, getting up here. Perfectly fine. So hopefully that answers the question of whether the first car is better or worse, depending on where it was run. Uh, I think that shows you that the terrain changes a little bit throughout the day, but not enough to significantly change the results. So we are back in the studio. Uh, I just want to give a big shout out to all of our staff for standing out in the rain while I stayed inside the car, uh, along with our competition winner as well for helping take down notes and stuff like that. Now results are on the screen. Igor has stuck them up there. If you do want to pause the video at this point, you can. Get your chance to digest all the results. Let's get into some of these results. And just before we do, I want to run you through a couple of caveats. So um, let's talk about tyres. So this came up in our last ute test. And if you do want to watch that, you can click up here to check that video out. But when we did our ute off-road test, a lot of you uh, spoke about tyres and why all of the vehicles should have been on the same tyres to test everything out. I disagree with that. And the reason we didn't bother going down the path of having the same tyres is we're doing light off-roading. The stuff that we're doing really isn't that scary or bad, and you should be able to do that in a vehicle out of the factory. So we are testing how well these vehicles perform out of the factory on factory tires. The second you start changing tires, you're taking the car outside of its engineering parameters, and you are going to affect a lot of other things outside of just the way the vehicle performs off-road. So that's why we stuck with the stock tires. In situations where there was a better all-terrain tire, some of the manufacturers chose to fit those, while others just stuck with the standard highway terrain option. Uh, tire pressures, likewise, we stuck with placarded tyre pressures. If you are going to be doing some serious off-roading, you obviously need to reduce your tyre pressures and look at how that actually affects the way that the vehicle performs off-road. But again, for consistency, we're just stuck with the standard tyre pressures. Uh, the hill surface. So one of the things you guys complained about last time was that the hill surface perhaps degraded and made it better or worse for cars, depending on where they were within the test. That's why we chose to run the Defender again at the end, uh, just to show that the hill surface, yes, it changes throughout the day with the rain and, and those types of conditions, but ultimately it didn't affect the vehicle from being able to 
pass uh, at the start or at the finish, regardless of where it ended up in the middle. And the final caveat I'll point out as well is we tried to do the same thing here that we did with the ute test in terms of climbing the terrain. I kept the same throttle application. Uh, I then gave it another couple of shots with a bit more throttle application. That was again, a bit of feedback that you guys had on our last test. So that's how all of that came together and um, hopefully you guys liked it. Now let's talk about the results. So I'm gonna start off with the four cylinder vehicles and um, I guess the highlights and the lowlights. And I think we'll start off with the MUX. So uh, this is one of those vehicles, and you saw it on the rollers there, that the standard traction control just doesn't seem to work at all for the type of vehicle that it is. You would think that a city vehicle or something like that with, with this type of traction control application would be perfectly fine. But when you have a four wheel drive SUV that is meant to be able to go off road and you have traction control that won't even allow it to go up the rollers, which seems to be the most basic task of a traction control system, shows you that they need to work on it. On the upside though, it did have that rough road mode and that made all the difference. The second you activated that, it actually became far more confident. It was able to climb terrain better. And just overall, it improves the way that the vehicle performs off road. Hopefully they put that mode on the D-Max as well, so they have the, the same outcome there. Outside of that, it actually did a pretty good job with the rest of the test. It was able to climb things, even on the tires that it was on. So good job, Isuzu. Ford Everest, four cylinder. I mean, that was pretty disappointing in my opinion. So it did okay on the rollers uh, and the, the chassis flex test and the offset mogul. But when it came to climbing our offset mogul hill, really did just struggle uh, being able to get up there with any form of ease. And that also had the optional uh, all-terrain tires. So it does show you that I think some of these traction control systems might work well in some situations, but here they relied a bit too much on the traction controls and it just wasn't able to climb that terrain where a lot of other similar vehicles were perfectly capable of climbing it in a much better fashion. On the upshot though, with both Everest, I really like the hill descent controls and how you can adjust the speed on those. I thought that system was really nice. Uh, the other four cylinder combo, Fortuna did really well across all the tests, but then we came to Prado and that was just a bit of a disappointment. I feel like the Prado is using an old version of Toyota's traction control systems and perhaps the Fortuna has got a newer version and it's better developed. And it is worth pointing out, this could even be a caveat, the proving ground we did all our off-road testing at is actually used extensively by Toyota in the development of things like Land Cruiser and the next generation of Prado. So I think they had a hometown advantage and, and clearly it shows you that perhaps they haven't put as much work into Prado for quite some time and it really does need that little bit of work. But when you did switch off a lot of those systems, it actually performed much better. Once you lock that center diff, lock the rear diff, it really just starts climbing the way that the Fortuna does. So it does show you that it just takes a little bit of button pressing to get things to work with the Prado. Um, and I'll just quickly touch on the Rexton. Look, I think that self-locking rear differential stuff just has to go, it really just it's just so all over the place. It's sometimes on, sometimes off. There's no way to control it or predict when it's gonna kick in. And if it does kick in when you don't want it, it will kick sideways violently, which is just nothing that you want uh, to catch you unawares. So that is worth keeping in mind. Okay, let's go to our six and eight cylinder vehicles. I'm gonna start off with the Grand Cherokee L. Recently, we published our towing test, and if you haven't seen that, you can scroll down to the link in the description below. The Grand Cherokee L showed us why you shouldn't fit a naturally aspirated petrol V6 engine to a large SUV for the purpose of towing. Same story here when it comes to off-road driving. I think that that engine is perhaps the limiting factor to why this thing just can't perform as well off-road. I mean, and then the, the chassis flex, uh, we couldn't sort of open and close the door properly. After we went through the Mogul, the rear door was rattling for the rest of the day. I think it just shows you that the Grand Cherokee L perhaps is better suited to driving in and around the city and has kind of lost that off-road credential that Jeep has built its brand over. And certainly in comparison to the previous generation of the Grand Cherokee, which you could kind of go anywhere in, the new Grand Cherokee L just doesn't seem to be as off-road capable. So a little bit disappointing there. And I think Jeep can probably do a fair bit of work on that to improve its off-road credentials. Uh, Ford Everest V6. Look, I think the highway terrain tires were probably a bit of a limiting factor there. But but again, just like the four cylinder, it didn't really blow us away with the way that it uh, performed off-road. Certainly feels very different to the Ranger in terms of the off-road performance and perhaps a bit of work uh, needs to be done there to the traction controls. It did struggle a bit on that 30% climb and then it failed our 45% climb as well. Okay, off to the big boys, the Land Cruiser and the Nissan Patrol. Look, they are both fantastic vehicles when it comes to off-roading because you have so many settings you can choose from. But I think the Patrol Pip, the Land Cruiser there, you can climb any terrain with that patrol. It is an absolute beast and you didn't really need to set any of the 
things. You could just climb and it did everything. You can lock the rear diff. You had a few other sort of drive modes there, but I just reckon it could attack any terrain that was thrown at it. Didn't really even have an aggressive off-road tire either. So it does show you that they have years of experience here and both Toyota and Nissan have done a great job with those big SUVs. Uh, finally, uh, before we jump over to the winners, the Land Rover Defender. Now, when we were editing this video, we were playing back some of the footage and I complained when we went up that 45% climb the first time that it was doing some weird stuff at the top of the hill where it was flaring and just, I don't know, just being very fussy. And then in the footage, you can actually see the brake lights come on. So I wasn't touching the brakes at all. So I don't know why the brake lights were coming on. Maybe it was like an over rev reduction or, or something like that, but it was definitely killing its momentum. And whatever that feature is, I reckon it needs to go because it is impeding its ability to drive off road. And it was funny when it was in its highest setting, it just didn't really perform that well. I felt like it was on its tippy toes and really scrabbling for traction. And perhaps that setting is best suited for water forwarding and, and those times when you actually need that extra ground clearance. If you're doing this type of light off-roading, it seemed to perform well in its, uh, I guess, normal height setting where it can really sort of just dig in and get moving. So I really did like with that optional off-road pack how the center and rear diffs can variably lock. That gives you just the ultimate control over wheel slip and, and um, just gives you the confidence of climbing the terrain you need to climb. Oh, and the other two I forgot to mention there, the LX600, the uh, Pajero Sport, both did really well. LX600 obviously based on the 300 series Land Cruiser, same type of off-road setup with the exception of it being a petrol instead of a diesel. And Pajero Sport, I love the fact that you can adjust all of those drive modes, have it in a permanent four wheel drive while you're on sealed surfaces and unsealed surfaces, really gives you a whole bunch of control over that four wheel drive system. Now onto our winners. So we split this into two categories. We have the best four cylinder, and then we have the best overall four wheel drive SUV when it comes to off-road driving. The best four cylinder award goes to the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport. This really is an impressive vehicle that can kind of go anywhere. And we did see that with the Triton as well, despite not having a massive price tag and a litany of drive modes and other features, it's able to do what it does really well. And that is just climb terrain that really, it shouldn't be able to climb as well as it does. It really just gives you all of the confidence you need behind the wheel. And I love that super select four wheel drive system that lets you just lock it into four wheel drive high range while you are just driving on sealed surfaces. So good job Mitsubishi, congratulations on that. And drum roll please, our overall winner, Nissan Patrol. I just think that this thing, despite its age, is an absolute trooper. It is just showing that you don't need all the latest whiz-bang gadgets for this to go anywhere. It was just able to be pointed at a hill, bit of terrain, you press the throttle and away it goes. And you're gonna love that naturally aspirated V8 sound as well. So congratulations, Nissan and Mitsubishi on taking out our two awards there. Now, what did you think of our test? I'm always keen for your feedback. Is there anything you liked, didn't like, anything you thought we did wrong or did really well? Let us know in the comments section below. Like I said, we couldn't have every car in the segment, but we covered off most of them. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. That'll help us grow. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon, let us know in the comments section below, what should we be testing next? I am very keen to find out, but until next time, take it easy.